Good morning everyone and welcome to another video on Mr. Ong Math Lesson. Today we are going to look at the third question of the NCA Level 1 Tables, Equation and Graph. If you have not watched question 1 and 2 in the other videos, please do so. And if you can watch both 1, 2 and 3 of all the 3 videos, you should be able to do well in this external. So let's go. So question three, the first question on question three said, draw the graph or sketch the graph of y equal to three bracket x minus one. And you know this is an exponential graph, okay? So to do that, whenever you have a graph, the best thing to do is to draw a table. Uh, if you have a graphic calculator, just put that number, this equation into the table section and the graph will appear for you or you go into the table section and this table will appear so if those of you without the graphic calculator i'll show you how to do it so again you put the column of x and y okay so x you can choose any number you like so since this is a positive so we're going to choose from 0 1 2 3 4 onwards and for the y the equation is 3 bracket x minus 1 so we're going to substitute so we decide to choose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, and see how it goes. So when x equals to 1, we substitute them, it's going to y equal to 1. So we'll look at how when x equals to 3. So equation is y equal to 3, x minus 1. When x equal to 3, we substitute x equal to 3 into that equation. So y equal to 3 bracket 3 minus 1 or y equal to 3 squared and y equal to 9 and we got x is 3, y is 9, we plot the point, x is 3, y is 9, and that will be the point. Similarly, we're going to plot all the points and find the equation for x and y when x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when x is 1, y is 1, so 1, 1 is here. When x is 2, y is 3, 2 and 3, and 3, 3, 3, 9 we've done before. When x is 4, x is 27, so x is 4, y is 27 and unfortunately when x is 5 81 is way up there we can't draw that graph so that is how you draw the graph and that will give you an easy achieve in this paper let's go now we do the second part okay part b okay so we shall read the question now okay the question is a seabird flight is shown in the graph below so this is the seabird flight okay the bird take off from the cliff so the cliff is here at point c the birds follow a graph, a path using this equation, minus 1.5 bracket x minus 2 squared plus 15, where x is the horizontal distance, so your x-axis is your horizontal distance, and h is your height. The bird then change direction at d, and he going to in a diving motion that follows a straight line until he hits the c at point f. Point f here. So we know the point S is 10 meters, so that point is going to be 10, 0, because X is 10, Y is 0, okay? And we are going to find the greatest vertical height and the bird hitch reach the above the sea level. So the greatest vertical height is going to be this point here, okay? So first you need to know this coordinate at the cliff is 0, 0, the starting point. No, a 0, uh, you do not know the height actually, uh, 0 something, okay? And the the d is 4 9 so in between 0 and 4 the middle number is going to be 2 so to do to find the greatest height you need to substitute x equal to 2 into that equation so the equation is h equals to minus 1.5 x minus 2 squared plus 15 so we're going to substitute 2 into that equation instead of x we're going to put x equal to 2 so minus 1.5 2 minus 2 squared plus 15 2 minus 2 is going to be 0 0 times minus 1.5 is going to be 0 so the answer is 15 so the greatest height is going to be at 15 meters so that height is going to be 15 meters so the greatest height uh, 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 that the bird can reach is 15 meters and that will give you your second achieve. Not too bad, right? Great. Now we shall do the next question. The next question asks you find the equation of the bird path, okay, on the uh, when it follows the straight line. So from D to S. As we said before, S is 10, 0 because the length is 10 and it on uh, the height is 0, so 10, 0. So first thing, the equation is going to be Y or H equal to m x plus c okay so now first we need to find the m and then we find the c m is found by using the rise over run or change of y over change in x so if this point is 9 and 
this point is zero so the height nine minus zero is going to be nine and on this the uh, the run is going to be ten minus four is going to be six so the rise of a run is nine over six since it's going downwards so the gradient is negative so the equation is going to be h equals to negative nine over six x plus c so do you found that m is negative nine over six now to find your c you have to substitute either the point d or s i decided to do s because s seems to be easier so we're going to substitute your value of x is 10 and your h is zero into this equation so if h is zero h is 10 sorry uh, no x is 10 and h is zero so x is 10 so instead of x we to replace by 10 and instead of h going to be zero we're going to substitute them and then minus 9 times 10 is 90 minus 90 over 6 okay and then we have to solve it you're going to plus 90 over 90 over 6 is actually 15 so you plus 15 on both sides so c equal to 15 one you found your c equal to 15 you're going to substitute back into this equation so the final equation is going to be h equal to 9 over 6x plus 15 because you found your m to be negative 9 over 6 and your c equals to 15 put it in your equation and that will give you a merit not too bad right great now we are going to do some understanding now okay so we read the question another seabird take off from the cliff it follows a similar parabola shape flight path how might how might the different flight of the path of the second bird be shown in the equation compared to the equation of the bird flight so the flight is h equal to negative 1.5 x minus 2 squared plus 15 so we can change 15 we can change the x we can change the scale factor of 1.5 so in this case i'm just going to talk about the scale factor if you want to get more detail about how to change the x value or the 2 here or the 15 here go to the marking schedule okay if x if we change the scale factor instead of one nine negative 1.5 if we change to a bigger number so for example we change to negative 3 or negative 5 okay what will happen is that the the graph will get will get uh steeper okay instead of going this way you're going steeper okay and but the point the 15 meters will still not change it'll still be the point similarly if we change the value of negative 1.5 to a smaller number say a negative 0 0.5 instead of getting steeper this will get flatter okay so that is the two point i'm going to tell you and then if you want to know what happened if you change the two or you change the 15 that will appear in a marking schedule and so far i'm only going to write two and if you can answer them both you get a merit not too bad right great okay now we do the excellence question the last question okay the last question a farmers want to set up a rectangular field of equal area so they are all equal side by side he has a total of 120 meters of fencing so he can fence that out 120 and he want to find the setup that maximize the total area of the field the required setup so we're going to let x be the width okay so there are four x's and the length is going to be y so the perimeter is going to be x x x x plus them plus 2y is going to be 4x plus 2y and that number is going to be 120 because there's the fencing so 4x plus 2y is 120 we're going to divide by 2 so 2x plus y equals 60 and we rearrange it so y you minus you're going to minus 2x on both sides okay minus 2x on both sides you're going to get y equals to minus 2x plus 60 or if you want to simplify them you get 60 minus 2x is the same okay so y equal to 60 minus 2x and the area is length the length here y times x so it's going to be x times y is xy so we're going to use the x value the y formula and the area formula to draw a table so again we're going to draw a table okay so from the previous example we we have shown so instead of x it will remain as x y is 60 minus 2x and area is xy okay once you have done that we are going to analyze it so once we're going to put that we're going to put the value so x is zero we substitute zero into the equation 60 minus zero is 60 and the area is 60 times zero is zero similarly when x is five okay when x is five so 60 minus 2 times 5 is 60 minus 10 it's going to be 50 50 times 5 is going to be 250 and we do the same for all the numbers from 0 to 30 okay so once we have done that we found that the largest area is going to be this 
area here, 450, when x is 15 and y is 30. Similarly, if we draw the graph of x versus area, so this x axis, and this the area, okay, we look at this graph, okay? So when x is 0, y is 0, going to be this point, x is 5, y is 250, going to be 5, 250, and 10 is going to be 400, and so forth. And we found that the highest point is here, when x is 15, and the area is 450, and your y is 30. So the maximum area is when x is 15, y is 30, and the area is going to be 450, so it will be meters here. And if you can do that, that will give you an excellence in this paper. So again, as I repeat, you have to watch video 1, video 2, and now the video 3. If you can practice them again and again, I see no way you shouldn't get at least a merit or excellence in this paper. Have a good day everyone, and cheers. See you soon.